going to read a couple of uh, scriptures, one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. Begin with Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 to 4. And it says this, Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out, or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teaching, the islands will put their hope. And Luke chapter 23, verses 33 and following. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine, vinegar, and said, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. There was written a notice above him which read, This is the King of the Jews. going to focus uh, what I'd like to share this morning from Isaiah chapter 42. It's just a lovely scripture and we learn so much about, um, about our Lord Jesus, King of Kings. I'm, I'm going to have to take my hat off and not because I need to take my hat off, but actually they are being reminded that um, when I'm in the company, of, this is something we were taught in Zimbabwe, when you're in the company of somebody you want to show respect to, you take your hat off. The, and I'm sorry for not doing it earlier, Lord. <laughs> the, and thank you for speaking to us the way you do. How's my hair, by the way? Okay. <laughs> it's lovely to have you. <laughs> We've been focusing on uh, Jesus, King of the King, King of Kings during the week and praying for King Charles and Queen Camilla um, as we have done it. And um, I was thrilled as I read this passage uh, recently to find that the, 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 the themes that we've had so far and the theme I'm using this morning are found in this um, passage of Scripture. And uh, the first verse, um, I don't know if you could put that up, please, um, Esther, that would be great, um, of chapter 42, verse 1. It says, I will put my spirit on him. On Monday, we thought about Jesus, um, the anointed one, the one who had the Spirit of God who rested on him. And on Saturday, we get to see an amazing thing where the Archbishop of Canterbury will anoint uh, King Charles with oil on his head, his, his chest, heart, and his hands for the work that he has been called to do. And then an, an extraordinary thing happens. Charles alone goes into the canopy the tent that has been created for him, so that it is just him and God. A, a most sacred moment. Um, and it just, it, it, I find it quite moving. And as I, as I was speaking about it on Monday, I, I was just reminded of the Spirit of God who comes on us. And what a sacred and lovely thing that is. The Spirit of God comes on you. And not to be taken frivolously or lightly, but... It's a sacred thing. It's God coming and resting on us. So that's how we'll put my spirit on him. And then uh, the, f the, first few verse, the first few words, Here is my servant whom I uphold. Veronica spoke on Tuesday about uh, Jesus as servant and Jesus as shepherd. And um, the, the service on Saturday is actually called a call to serve. And from the very first few words, um, King Charles says, 
and, uh, and I'll read it. Uh, King Charles is welcomed by a child, and the child says, this is right at the beginning, Your Majesty, as children of the kingdom of God, we welcome you in the name of the King of Kings. Whoop, whoop. And the king replies, in his name and after his example, I came not to be served, but to serve. It's right there. Um, and it's just beautiful to see. And if, folk, if you haven't had a look at this, the, the service for Saturday, it's available online. Um, and, uh, and I love the way the church has, uh, has made a point of actually um, giving a commentary alongside it. So every part of the service points to Jesus points to Jesus, points to Jesus, so that we can see how, how this is an important event. And as I've, as I've grown into the event, as I have to confess, I had to grow into the event <laughs> last week, this time, I didn't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just thrilled that I've taken notice. Because we get to witness something on Saturday we don't often get to witness. And it's not an act of mankind. There is something divine happening on Saturday, and I'm excited about that. Um, so Veronica spoke about Jesus as a servant and Jesus as shepherd, and we see that um, we, we, we see that being worked out in the service. We see that being fulfilled in the the family, the royal family. They they came to serve and they do serve, a and it doesn't rest there, does it? We too are called to serve. We have a we have a calling to serve and to shepherd, and we do those things. You know, yesterday I spoke of. Um, uh, of the King of Kings, and it says there, he will bring justice to the nations. He, we see various organizations trying to bring justice to the nations these days, and they just fail dismally. But Jesus Christ will bring justice to the nations. And uh, it's a wonderful thing to be reminded of the fact that he is sovereign, he is on the throne, and his kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven, and he will bring that to pass because he is King of Kings. Thank you. It's lovely to have you. And, and as we thought about Jesus yesterday as the King of Kings, we, we, we tried to figure where Charles and Camilla fit into that. Well, Charles and Camilla, wisely, as you see in the service, the first thing they do is they bow their heads. And so they should. But not just them. It's our calling too. We come to serve the King of Kings and I want to bow my head before him, and I suspect you do too. So we see that all of that just being worked out in that, in that first verse, and, um, and then uh, it describes, it describes this, uh, this one as my chosen one, in whom I delight. You recognize the words? In whom I delight. Where does that come from? Baptism of Jesus. This is my son whom I love and I delight in him. It's prophesied there in Isaiah and it's just wonderful um, to see. And then there are four characteristics um, th that speak of Jesus, which I'm just going to speak to very, very briefly. Um, because they're heartwarming, they are compassionate, they are what we need, and they are for us. So it says in verse 2, he will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. Ah, Jesus is not a sergeant major on the, <laughs> on the battleground um, drilling his, his troops into, um, into shape, is he? He's, he's silent. He's, he's quiet about the way he goes about his business. And it, it speaks volumes for those who practice authority in, in silence. We have a, a lovely sister-in-law who's a teacher, um, and I was fascinated whenever we used to go to her school, but you go past her classroom and you think, oh, they must be out in the playing field. But then you look through the window and actually, no, they're not in the playing field. They're in there, absolute silence. And she just had a way of doing that. And her children knew, we don't make noise in this class. The class is on either side, loads of noise. That's where I would have been. <laughs> but her class, silence. She just had an authority to bring about. And Jesus comes with silence, and he brings authority with that silence, and it's a wonderful thing to behold. Verse 3, a bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. A bruised reed, 
the prophecy from Isaiah recognizes that Jesus is going to be surrounded by people who are bruised, broken, battered, bleeding. And it says he will not break them. That is not what he comes to do. He comes to heal, to restore, to lift up, to build, to equip. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. If you've ever, ever tried to, to light a, um, uh, to, to rekindle a fire that is, uh, is getting to the end of its life, you know that you don't go at it wildly, try, <laughs> do you? Just very, very gently you blow, and the smoldering wick just comes to life again. That's the gentleness of this servant, this chosen one that Isaiah is speaking about. And um, St. Peter says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. He cares for you. He cares for each one of us. And verse, um, verse 3 uh, again, in faithfulness he will bless you. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. In chapter 11, verse 5 of Isaiah, it says that uh, this, the servant who is going to come is going to wear faithfulness like a sash around his waist. He is robed in faithfulness. He wears faithfulness like a, like a, a sash around his waist. And the Exodus says he abounds in faithfulness. Faithfulness oozes out of this servant. And we see it fulfilled in the promises that he makes. He is faithful to his promises. He breathes, eats, sleeps faithfulness to us, his chosen ones. And then finally, verse 4. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. He may be quiet. He may be gentle. But he is strong and powerful and courageous and has the stammer that is required to bring about his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And it will be a just nation. It will be everything that we all hope for in his teaching the islands will put their hope it will be a place of peace it will be a place of prosperity it will be a place of of the fulfillment of life and he will do it by his strength who are we talking about we're talking about my chosen one i often try and imagine the, the conversation before the beginning of time when Father, Jesus, and the Spirit were talking together about let's create, let's do, let's make people in our image like us. And they knew what would happen. They knew there would be a fall. They knew there would be rebellion. And then there was the moment where the chosen one was appointed to pay the price so that we may be chosen. Have you ever thought about that conversation that they had? It's a tough one, isn't it? Did Jesus say, I'll do it? Or did Father say, will you? We don't know, do we? But we know that from the beginning of time, there was a plan to restore us to him that we may be the chosen. And this we are. On Saturday, we are privileged to witness a coronation. King Charles and Queen Camilla will be anointed and set apart for the service that they have been called to do. Are they chosen? Are they chosen? 
I think they are. I believe God is sovereign, you see. And I believe God knows exactly what's going to happen when, on which day, at which time. And I do not believe that it is an accident that there is a coronation taking place at Westminster on Saturday. I believe he knew the time. He knew the event. He knew I would dress up. (laughs) And have to be reminded to take my hat off. prophets of old spoke about someone who would come from Nazareth and be born in Bethlehem. He knew that. And so he has a Roman emperor call a decree so that they have to be in the right place at the right time so the prophecy can be fulfilled. Our time is in his hands. Your time is in his hands. Charles and Camilla's time are in his hands. And he will bring about his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So I finish with this. You chosen ones. You chosen ones. The Lord Jesus is here. And he comes to you today. Quietly. Gently. Faithfully to heal, restore, forgive, and to build. And to say again, follow me. Follow me. And together, we will bring about God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Would you like to do that?